give these guys a chance to come up with that big hit. Tonight it could be J.J. Hardy with the big home run. It could be Jonathan Scope with the big home run. Somebody in front of them has to draw a walk or get hit by a pitch or come up with a big single so that possibly a long ball can win a game. So, you know, they're not depending, even though they rely on a home run, I guess. We talk about them hitting home runs. But it's things that happen prior to the home run. Chris Davis, before he hit that monster shot on the Utah Street, picked up two singles the other way. Mm -hmm. He found the bat head. He felt good at the plate and hit a huge home run. Adam Jones starting to heat up again. Three home runs in his last four games. Manny Machado has been consistent since the beginning of June, putting up monster numbers about as well-rounded as a player as you're going to see. But it's a total package. It's a total team effort. It isn't because of the base hits that, or the home run that Machado got or Chris Davis or Jones. It's about that defense Machado played it's about the defense that Adam Jones played gunning down Butler from center field chopping down a run Manny threw out Coco Crisp at home so there are two potential runs that could have scored and game saving defensive plays as well so it was a well rounded game last night nice to see the Orioles offense picking it up and Machado Davis and Jones really adding some thunder there with the long ball could be three different heroes tonight and the Orioles are hoping that they can carry over the emotion of last night and put together back to back wins it's the O's and A's from Camden Yards lineups and first pitch are next. Southwest Airlines. Book your low fares now at Southwest.com. And by Royal Farms. Royal Farms world famous chicken and western fries made fresh, never frozen, real fresh, real fast. Royal Farms. Big crowd on hand here at Camden Yards on J.J. Hardy Jersey night. Our BGE home game time temperature is 85 degrees. That humidity is still on the rise. BGE Home is Baltimore's home team for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical. Why would you call anyone else? Here's a look at the Oakland lineup for tonight. They're looking to bounce back after their loss last night. Billy Burns in the leadoff spot. He's been hot in his last five games, and you need to keep him off the bases. 23 steals. Cannon Reddick and Butler with vote catching, then Laurie Sogard, Simeon, and Sam Folden left field batting ninth. Now let's take a look at Miguel Gonzalez's pitch arsenal this season. The fastball at 60%. When he's on with the fastball, he can work it both in and out, up and down in the zone. Good two seam movement as well. Problem is, recently, not much command of that heater. Breaking ball has a slow curve and a tighter slider and a good split finger as well. 4 4 5 earned run average has jumped up in his last few starts. Has pitched 119 innings, 92 punch outs, 38 walks on the season for Miguel. Some recent walk struggles as well to go along with that command. 263 opponent batting average overall. He's a fly ball pitcher, 61% of his outs in the air, but he has given up 
20 long balls. Keep it in the yard tonight, Miguel. Trust your ability. I think uh, at times Miguel strives for perfection. Thinks about that delivery, and not just trusts his mechanics and things that he's done his whole life. He didn't make it to the big leagues, you know, with just the flawless mechanics. He made it with grit and desire and a big heart. And he's got to get step up and compete. And he's got to do it right now and start turning the corner here. Start bouncing back for this team. Well, it'll be a good idea if he can give the Orioles an extended start as the bullpen last night. Eight innings of use because of the 13 inning game. The only reliever who did not pitch last night was T.J. McFarlane, who Buck Showalter held back to back up Miguel tonight. So the first pitch is swung on and fouled back, and we are underway at Camden Yards. Billy Burns with a five-game hitting streak. He is 10 for his last 28. And he is a pest at the top of the lineup. Boy, he sure is. I mean, one of the best young rookies you're going to see in the game today. Leading the way with the stolen bases, 25 on the year. Center field, Adam Jones was shallow, going back on it. And that's going to be over his head. And Burns can fly. He's going to head to third. And he's going to make third with a leadoff triple. So playing shallow to take away the single. And Burns hits it over the head of Adam Jones. And there's a leadoff triple to begin the game. It's not too often that he can beat an outfield deep, but when he does get a hold of him, ball tends to carry. Here, the elevated fastball up and out over a short swing, squares it up with a big bat head, and it carries over Adam Jones's head. And with that tremendous speed, he's turning and burning easily into third base to start this game off. Well, the Orioles fell behind early last night, and eventually Oakland took a 4 0 lead by the fifth. Before the birds began their comeback and here's Mark Canna the rule five pick the first baseman tonight Orioles have the infield back and a bouncer to short here's Hardy He'll take the play at first as the run scores Canna's retired but an RBA ground out and a couple of batters into the game The athletics have a one nothing lead. Well, the Orioles defense best in baseball last night Adam Jones showing off the great arm from center field Manny Machado on the hot corner making a play that no third baseman in the Major League Baseball will make unbelievable arm great range and here's a look at the rest of the Orioles defense Rhyme hold Jones and para in the outfield Hardy and scope up the middle Chato and Davis on the corners and Steve Clevenger in the starting job behind the plate tonight Here's Josh Reddick the right fielder and he'll take a strike on the corner Reddick last night one out of four And the pitch is low. Reddick is still only 28 years old. You see the shift against him with scope in right field. And you wonder what kind of a year he could put together if he could ever stay healthy the entire year. It's been a problem for Reddick as of late. And he takes inside. And he won a gold glove in 2012. The 32 home runs that year. You you stay healthy and you give yourself a chance. And he's the kind of player that can put up numbers. Absolutely. Still very young, not even in his prime. Great experience already at the major league level. And a tapper out near the first baseline. Miguel quickly fielding his position and gets it to first for the out. Nicely done by Miguel. Yeah, helping himself out. Nice job bouncing off the mound. Nice curveball as well. Very slow curveball. Haven't seen that often from Miguel. Typically goes with the harder slider, but mixed up a couple. Slow curves to get Reddick off balance and there just a tapper out in front fielding his position PFP right there Now two down here's Billy Butler Butler DHing And Miguel misses across his body outside Now one thing to pay attention to uh, with Miguel just his tempo in the ball game. He's had uh, three rough starts here, really kind of focusing on his mechanics, and I think sometimes that might get in the way. When you think about those type of things during a ball game, whether you're a pitcher or a hitter, um, that can get in the way of your overall performance. You start thinking about where your arms are, how you're separating uh, the ball from your glove, uh, the rhythm of your delivery. You just have to trust. The things that you've worked on in the bullpen or even the out playing catch and let it go and compete Manny gloves to his left gets it across and the scoop on the back end by Chris Davis nicely done on each side and the inning ends Oakland does get a run but Manny Machado ends the inning 
far to his left, the spin throw and the scoop. We head to the bottom of the first. Here come the O's. Some others as well. It was great to have the plebes out here. This uh, Baltimore is a Navy town, Mike Bordick. Let's take a look at the O's starting lineup brought to you by Southwest. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Machado, Parra, and Jones with Davis in the cleanup spot. Jonathan Scope batting fifth. He is having a heck of a month of August. That's why he's moved up in that batting order. Clevenger gets a start tonight. Then Hardy, Yerudia back from AAA. And Nolan Reimold in left field. He'll bat ninth. Now let's take a look at. Chris Bassett's pitch arsenal, 26 year old righty. Who's that fastball 59% of the time? It is a good fastball, 91 to 96 with the heater. Breaking ball has a little slider and curveball. Curve, probably the best breaking ball or off speed delivery that he has. Also has a pretty good change. So he'll use that full arsenal against the lefties. Righties are going to see the fastball slider combination. The opponent's hitting just 210. He is a fly ball pitcher, 63% of his outs in the air. Now the Orioles saw Bassett in their road trip the last road trip to Oakland Manny comes in batting 298 and he and Miguel squared off in that game and Bassett was the winner Miguel took the loss that was on August the 4th and he takes a strike that was the only game the Athletics won in that series and there are the numbers in that start yeah pretty impressive line seven strong innings just the five hits no earned runs seven K's now he backed that up and his following start faced the Houston Astros came away with 10 strikeouts so he's been on a nice little roll Hicks is in that little slider right there has a good fastball that he can ride to the top of the zone the breaking ball pretty much is put away pitch likes to bury that pitch it's going to you're going to see the big 12 to 6 breaker and the fact that he's 6 5 and he's got this kind of unorthodox delivery a lot of arms and legs coming at you a little funk there ground ball towards the hole Simeon Deep shortstop throws across and gets Machado. Nicely done by Marcus Simeon. One away in the O's first. Well, Simeon's had some defensive problems. Here's a look at the Athletics defense. Fold, Burns, and Reddick in the outfield. Simeon and Sogard up the middle. Lowry and Kana on the corners and both doing the catching. And Simeon uh, came into this ballgame. 30 errors. Athletics defense uh, has been shoddy to say the least uh, defensively. Worst defensive team in the game. You want to put it in perspective? There's Simeon. He has 30 errors. Brett Laurie next to him at third has 20. They have 50 errors, those two. The Orioles as a team have 45. Right. So they have certainly been challenged this year defensively. Here's Gerardo Parra batting second. He'll take ball one. Parra looking to heat up. He went two for five last night. Had some real good at bats, scored a couple of runs. He has scored 10 runs in his 12 games as an Oriole. And grabbed by the pitcher Bassett. Makes a possible base hit away. Para is retired and two quick outs by Chris Bassett. Here's our American standard who's hot and who's not. Oh, take a look. Adam Jones, uh, three home runs in his last four games. 
He is definitely red hot. Eric Sogard, not so hot. Last four games, just one for eight. A couple strikeouts. American Standards Who's Hot Who's Not celebrate the season with the American Standard All Star Event. Visit MidAtlanticComfort.com for amazing rebate and financing opportunities. So Adam last night had the big blow to get the Orioles back in the game. A three run home run in the bottom of the fifth. He had a four RBI night. Adam now has 16 multi RBI games on the year. Another uh, consistent year for Adam Jones, numbers wise. Five straight seasons with 20 or more home runs. Reached that 20 mark in last night's ball game. Adam bounces it to third off the glove of Laurie. That's a fair ball, and Adam's going to reach. The dive may have prevented a double, and Adam Jones is on with a two out base hit. Well, it's tough to defend Adam Jones. You have to respect the speed, and Lowry has to take a tight line to this ball. And it really uh, becomes a play that he's just trying to knock it down. Lateral movement, just reaching out, trying to keep the ball in the infield. He prevents the double down the line. Maybe uh, a different base runner. He might take a deeper angle and try to field that ball. Maybe back on that outfield grass like a Manny Machado. So Adam Jones on with two down for Chris Davis. He hit a Utah Street home run last night, third of the season. And in his last 11 games, Mike, he has been on some kind of a tear. My, oh my. 375, seven home runs, 14 RBI. And it isn't really this month since uh, after the All Star break. He's been one of the best hitters in the game in every category batting average, home runs, RBI. Well, here's the OPS best improvement pre All Star break. Post All Star break, and only as Drupal Cabrera a bigger difference because he was uh, a little worse than before the break. All right. Chris Davis uh, we talked about the numbers, but since that All Star break, 333, 13 homers, 32 RBIs, now leading the league with 85 stakes. Right. Chris Davis goes down on a swinging strikeout, a three pitch strikeout. That ends the inning. So a two out single, a man left. We head to the second, one nothing A's. Time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Light. Nice view from high above the upper deck, right behind home plate. There's Steve Clevenger and Miguel Gonzalez ready to go to work here. Miguel only threw 10 pitches in the first inning, but the leadoff triple led to a run. Now really the only mistake he made in that inning. The elevated fastball. He burns a chance to get the bat head too. Well, Miguel looking for some length in this start. Uh, Steven Vogt comes up. Laurie and Sogard will follow. And then there's a strike. Miguel has gone less than six innings, Mike, in eight of his last ten starts. 
And he has pitched to an ERA of 5.68 combined in those 10 games. Those are certainly unmiguel like numbers. That ball's hit into the shift, scope to his left, and fires to get the hustling vote. And one away on a couple of pitches in the second. Well, don't forget tomorrow afternoon when the O's take on the A's at 135, the first 7,500 fans, 14 and under, will receive a Chris Tillman growth poster presented by Topps. So see how your child measures up to the six foot five O's hurler. It is a fun life size poster, perfect for any O's fan, especially young O's fans. Visit Orioles.com or call 888 848 Bird. When I was coming back upstairs after getting the lineup, I saw one of the base runners in the elevator with one of those growth posters in the tubing. Yeah. She had the tubing right side up, and it was taller than her. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a life-size poster. So if the youngsters want to see where they measure up against the major leaguer, that's Chris on the bench. Yeah. Uh, get out here and get out here early tomorrow. But Showalter said today Chris is fine for his next start. He had a side session today. He was hit by that batted ball by the bicep in Seattle, but he'll be okay. He is scheduled to go on Monday in the finale of this series. One and two on Brett Laurie, one out, none on. And he goes after a high fastball and can't reach it. First strikeout for Miguel in two away. Lori was exposed to a couple fastballs up and in in yesterday's ball game. Take a look at the Nissan pitch track. That is the target zone. One, two, three. On the fourth pitch, down he goes. Fastball up and in. Can't get to it. So Miguel in search of a three up, three down inning. Here is Eric Sogard, who did not play in the game last night. He was the only athletics position player not to get into the game. And he fouls it off. Sogard has really been scuffling. He is nine for his last 46. That's a 196 clip. Yeah, he was uh, had some pretty good sex, uh, success before the break when he was sitting over 250. And then since the All-Star break, kind of plummeting. A lot of players uh, make that turn at the break. Something happens. It might be the fact that you get the four days off and you kind of lose that rhythm and timing and other players that rest benefits them come out and have a great second half. Miguel gets ahead no balls and two strikes. And he won't chase the splitter. The loss by Miguel to the athletics in Oakland August 4th. That's his only career decision against Oakland. He is 0 1 against the athletics. Hit towards the hole. J.J. Hardy can't reach it. That's a base hit. So he hit it against the shift and gets it by Hardy, who was shading up the middle. Yeah, that split finger just didn't uh, fade down and away. And typically when he's on, especially left-handers, see a nice down and away fade action on the split finger. He threw that one a little bit harder, and it stayed up in the zone, allowing Sogard to get a good piece of the bat on it, slapping it by Hardy. Here's Marcus Simeon. Shortstop. Ten home runs, 28 RBIs. And a fastball right there for a strike. Simeon's got a nine game hitting streak going. Oh, look at those numbers. July 183, and here in the month of August, just whipping that bat head through the zone. 410 clip. I mentioned that nine game hitting streak. Big night last night. Throw to first to Chase Sogard. Well, Simeon was part of the trade, and there's this uh, perception of the athletics that Billy Bean, their GM, is constantly rebuilding. But when Bean traded Jeff Samarja to the White Sox, he got Simeon, he got Josh Fegley, who's their backup catcher, and he got tonight's starter, Chris Bassett, plus another minor leaguer. Yeah. So it was a four for two. Three of the four are on the 25 man roster here for Jeff Samarja. Who would have left at the end of this year as a free agent anyway? All right. So if you're going to make the bold trades, get back quality talent, and he got back quality young talent. 
And sometimes there seems to be a method to his madness. <laughs> I think uh, he is a little over aggressive other times. Sogard was on the move. Adam Jones in left center field. He's got it. Simeon's retired. And the inning ends. So two out single, a man left. Head to the bottom of the second, one nothing over. And Jonathan Scope certainly establishing himself at the plate this year. Here's our express stat by Express Care, a LifeBridge health partner for locations. Visit whywaitintheer.com. And what you look for in a young player is consistent improvement, and that's what the O's are getting from Jonathan. Absolutely. See the numbers last season, 209 batting average and climbed all the way up to 293. Now, last year, the first full season for Jonathan Scope, but what a great learning experience. Being exposed to a winning atmosphere, learning from Nelson Cruz, all the numbers for Jonathan Scope on the rise. Unfortunate injury this year at a setback, but he's going to be fresh and strong down the stretch for this team, um, putting up some impressive numbers. Every offensive st statistic is uh, improved for Jonathan Scope this season. First ball swinging, pops it back this way. Well, Jonathan is two for his last 15, but if you look at his numbers over his last 12 games, Mike, he's batting at a 372 clip in those games. Yeah, he's been swinging. He looks good up there. He looks balanced. We talked about Manny Machado's legs and how he has a great foundation underneath him. So a breaking ball will hit Jonathan right in his number six. So the Orioles get a leadoff base runner. It is the sixth batter that Bassett has hit. The curveball getting away, catching Jonathan Scope. We're talking about Jonathan's uh, foundation. The strong legs. That breaking ball catches him on that left arm, the forearm area. Got the front number six. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here is Steve Clevenger, who was called up yesterday. He set it down and in. Matt Wieters is still active. He has the hamstring issue, and Buck Showalter said today, Monday is likely a day they'll have to make a decision whether to keep Wieters active as they're talking with Caleb Joseph or if they might have to DL him to get another player here. And for the moment, they are going with three catchers with Wieters active and on the bench. Well, two and on Clevenger, who in his brief time with the Orioles has swung the bat well. You we see Bassett at 15 pitches. He has been up and down from the minor leagues this year four different times. Yeah, that's uh, not easy for a young pitcher to do. We talked about Kevin Gosman on that uh, roller coaster ride up and down the minor leagues and jumping around. Well, Bassett's kind of done the same thing, fourth stint. Just recently called back up uh, July 25th, but it looks like he's made some adjustments. He's worked out of the bullpen. 
He started in AAA. He start, he's been in the bullpen in AAA. That was a look at uh, pitching coach Kurt Young for the Athletics, who helped so many young pitchers. Um, this Athletics team is really built around pitching. They've always had consistent starting, even this year. Bad record, but uh, consistent starting pitching has kept them in ball games. And Bassett's really found his niche and made the adjustments he's needed to. He's more aggressive in the zone with all of his offerings. There's a double play ball. Sogard flips to Simeon and back to first. 4 6 3 erases the base runner and two men down. Shortstop number two, Jay, Jay Hardy. Yeah, the fans really get into that, and tonight is J.J. Hardy replica jersey night, exactly like the one he's wearing. Today, the Orioles had their uh, State of the Orioles Day with the season ticket holders, an autograph session, and all the players wore J.J. Hardy jerseys yeah. to sign their autographs. There you go. There were number twos everywhere in the ballpark. Strike on the corner, one and one. Good jersey to have. J.J. Hardy, one of the best shortstops in the game of baseball today. Last few seasons as an Oriole. Gold gloves, silver slugger awards offensively. Yeah, the season ticket holders got here early, just after 3 o'clock. And the Orioles had the players set up at stations on the concourse. And you could go get in line if you want to get Adam Jones autograph or J.J. Hardy, whomever. Uh, try to find a line and hope that the line moves so you can get an autograph. And then there was a Q&A session with Buck Showalter and Dan Duquette. So a real nice job by the organization on the State of the Orioles summer session. They do it at FanFest. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, about halfway through the season. It was scheduled for June, but it was rained out against the Indians, so rescheduled for today. A lot of fans here interested in that uh, State of the Union as well, or State of the Orioles. There's a bouncer to Simeon and gloves and throws and gets hardy and another easy inning for Chris Bassett to hit batsman but none left. The led to the third at Camden Yards, one nothing over. of Edgewater has won $500 for being selected and will win $500 more for every Orioles home run hit in the game tonight. Play baseball buck scratch offs and win up to $50,000 or enter non-winning tickets for a chance to be the contestant of the game. Visit mdlottery.com slash baseball. Well, that's a good placard. Machado, Hardy, Scope, Jones, and Masson. Love that. Here's Sam Fold, the number nine batter against Miguel. Fastball belt high for a strike. 
Fold getting a start tonight in left field, batting at 196, and he is 0 for his last 18. Fouls it back at 0 and 2. Well, the A's have struggled uh, a little bit offensively. Not a lot of thump and thunder in this lineup. They really rely on working a starting pitcher, trying to get on base. Picking up a base hit or two here or there. Really a home run hitting team. Hughes that one foul into the camera well. Gonzalez one strikeout. He's allowed two hits, the leadoff triple in the first, and a two out single by Sogard in the second. Defense continues to play shallow against several of these athletics batters. Well, I really liked what I just saw there from Steve Clevenger patting the ground to remind Miguel, I want this one down in the zone. You're ahead 0 2. Don't make a mistake up. Well, we've seen that too often this year where a real starting pitcher gets ahead and makes a mistake. Can't bury a pitch or work the perimeter, stays on the plate. Either gives up a home run or an unfortunate base hit with runners on base. So Clevenger really uh, exaggerating one, and that ball bounced in the dirt. Sometimes you have to do that. Understand what kind of pitch needs to be thrown. Setting up inside. And this ball's ripped to right field, and that ball is back, and that ball is going to go. So he got ahead 0 and 2 couldn't put him away and there's a home run for Sam Fold just his second of the year snaps an 0 for 18 drought and the athletics with a 2 nothing lead. And some of the uh, struggling athletics hitters have heated up already in this series Fold picking up his second home run of the season take a look at this two seam fastball that leaks right back over the heart of the plate Clevenger wanting it in off the plate. Is a home run pitch that Fold takes advantage of. Well, big smiles for Fold. It's amazing the stretch that Miguel has been played through with the, in particular, the long balls, Mike. When he makes a mistake, he makes a mistake right in the happy zone for a hitter. I mean, you saw how far he missed his spot there. And not only did he miss his spot, he missed it exactly where Fold could extend his arms. Yeah. It, it is unfortunate. I think. Uh, Sometimes pitchers like hitters just try too hard and their natural abilities can't flow out there. And if Miguel's thinking about something other than just executing a pitch, you know, if he's thinking about maybe mechanics or making sure he stays back, um, that can get in the way from the execution. So the weak ground out by Burns for the first out. Here's Mark Kenna. RBI ground out in the first inning after the leadoff triple by Burns. And Miguel is now allowed 21 home runs. In his loss last Sunday against the Angels, he allowed two home runs, which drove in all four of the runs he allowed. Cole Calhoun a solo. And then it was David Murphy with a big three run home run, which Really was a major part of that game. Murphy eventually would win it in extra innings on the walk off hit. Well, Miguel, one, one thing about Miguel that we've noticed, I think, in his last few starts is just his tempo has been a little bit off. You know, and it, a lot of times it's just not trusting um, your mechanics out there or trusting your feel when you're on the mound. So maybe taking an extra second or two to kind of gather yourself. Collect your thoughts. And Miguel's tempo, or any pitcher on the Orioles or in the league for that matter, has a crisp tempo, an understanding of the game plan. The game moves smoothly. You don't get caught up in the extra thoughts. You just compete, you throw to the glove, you understand what's going on, and you just let it play out. Fastball's too high, so two and two on Canna. Looking to extend the hitting streak to seven in a row. Gonzalez trying for his 10th win on the year. He has not won since July 25th against Tampa. Check swing at a breaking ball and it's low. It's a good breaking ball. Uh, keeping it out of the zone, but he's got to prove he can throw that pitch for a strike. He's flipped up more than I've seen here 
and some recent starts. So it's nice to see him mixing in that curveball to get hitters off balance. But you have to prove you can throw it for a strike, and then you might get some of those chases down in the zone. Ground ball towards Hardy. JJ will backhand and then fire across. Scooped by Davis on the back end. And the out recorded. Nicely done again by Chris Davis. Oh, nice play on both ends. JJ Hardy gets himself in a perfect position, sets up that backside. Fire in the low fastball to Davis. But look at the positioning. Keeps the ball inside his body, backhand position, eyes behind the baseball. Nice pick there from Chris Davis. JJ Hardy I'm loving that. Here's Josh Reddick, two down. Reddick hit a weak ground ball towards the first base line that Gonzalez fielded and got him at first. Miguel, since his last win, 0 and 2 in the three starts, and his ERA in those starts, 8.10. Twelve earned runs in 13 and a third innings combined in those three games. See the shift on again against Reddick. He's trying to find that fuel for the off speed pitches. 40 pitches thrown, 51% fastball. We're going to the breaking ball 34% of the time. So that is his pitch to try to keep hitters off the fastball. The Yankees beat Toronto again today, four to one. So the Yankees now have a game and a half lead. And the Orioles, as Dan Duquette pointed out at the QA today, first things first, let's look at the wild card and then we'll make a run at the division. You got to position yourself. High fly ball left center field it pretty well. Adam Jones on the run. And that ball carries out. That's into the Orioles bullpen for a home run. So a two home run inning. Reddick goes the opposite way, and it is 3 0 Oakland. Pretty impressive power right there from Reddick, picking up his 14th dinger of the season. Lovinger setting up down and away. This fastball catching the center box again. And Reddick dropping the head on that ball is backspun out into the Orioles bullpen. With the Athletics just as they did last night, scoring early against the Orioles, now with a 3 0 lead. Billy Butler will take a strike. And at the knees, Butler didn't like the call. He's down 0 2. Slider, then a split finger. Well, not too happy with the fastball command right now, so going to the off speed pitches to get ahead. Well, he has thrown strike one to 11 of the first 13 batters, but when he's missed, he's missed in the wrong spot. Cued the other way, and that's a base hit. Para hustling over. Butler's thinking too. Para can throw. Here's the throw. He is out at second base. So Billy Butler challenging Para, and he is out. Bob Melvin is out on the field looking to see if they may ask for a challenge here. Larry Vanover, the crew chief, made the call at second base, and they are not going to challenge. A cue ball off the end, a breaking ball, another one from Gonzalez and Para getting to the baseball quickly. One of the strongest arms in the game, right on the money there. And then Butler has been thrown out back to back nights. So they added second base, but the Athletics extend their lead here in the third.
So Yankees won again today after coming back last night. Today it was four to one. The Blue Jays, however, extended their streak 19 consecutive starts by their starters of three earned runs or less, and that sets a franchise record. Uh, Drew Smiley of Tampa Bay, he'll be back in the rotation tomorrow. He's been out since May with a partial labrum tear. And how about the Red Sox and Mariners today? Boston wins it 22 to 10. The Sox have scored 15 runs in back-to-back -back games, just the fourth time since 1950. And Boston in that game, Mike, 22 runs on 26 base hits. Ouch. Red Sox uh, maybe a little too late, though, in this offense to start coming back around. Here's Henry Urrutia back with the team. Falls behind 0 and 2. Nice minor league numbers. 10 homers, 50 RBI. And on base percentage as well. Pulls an outside pitch. It's a ground ball to first. And right there is Marcana. He gets the first base. So Urrutia's retired and one away. Well, tickets remain for the Orioles' second social media night. It comes up Tuesday before the O's and Mets. You can enjoy a Q&A session with O's closer Zach Britton and Orioles.com writer Brittany Giroli. You'll get a game ticket, light fare, and an exclusive T-shirt. Tickets start as low as $30, but space is beginning to run out, so don't miss your chance. Get your ticket. Go to Orioles.com slash Birdland Social, and all the information is there for you. Nolan Rymo getting back-to-back -back starts. A couple hits in last night's ball game. With that average up to 239. Chris Bassett, 26 years old, out of Clay, Ohio. He pitched in college in his native state at the University of Akron. An opportunity to play some college basketball as well. Two sports star. So the baseball route. Seems to end up pretty good for him. And well, he made a nice play. Look at the first on the chopper where he showed his jumping ability. And six five. Yeah. Rymo taking all the way on three and oh. Slender six five, two hundred and ten pounds. And he is another of the many pitchers we see nowadays with reverse splits. And there's a one out walk to Nolan Rymel. This is our Maryland Live Casino inside the numbers. Lowest ERA since the All Star break. Chris Bassett at 2.03. That's what you want a prospect to do. You give him a chance, you come up. Not only that he shows you he can pitch, he's dominated. Yeah, you know, and they've tried him in different roles, but it's just a matter of coming up with that command with all of his offerings. You better be able to throw. At least three pitches uh, over the plate for strikes if you want to have some success and try to get deeper into ball games. At first, they didn't think he might have had that ability, but he's proven them wrong. And now uh, looks like he's going to be a mainstay here the rest of the season in the rotation. Well, his reverse splits, and maybe you as a former hitter can explain this to me. Righties are hitting 247, which isn't great, but the lefties are batting 184. And you would think that lefties would have a better look at his right handed arsenal as Machado fouls it back. Yeah, you would think so, but he uses all four of his pitches against left handed hitters. He'll cut the slider in under the hands and then work his change up down and away. So giving different looks has the good fastball that he can play up in the top of the zone as well. So right handed hitters are basically looking at the fastball and a breaking ball. Lefties uh, have to deal with that full arsenal. He has kept the ball in the ballpark in his brief stay with the Athletics. This is his 13th game and eighth start. He's allowed only three home runs. Vote went out. He didn't like that swing Machado had and throw to first to chase Reimold back. Let's see what he's using tonight. Likes the fastball, mixing in uh, curve and the slider against the righties. Weak ground ball toward short. Simeon flips the second. Sogard back to first. There's an inning ending double play. Second double play that Bassett has thrown in this game. We're through three at Camden Yards. Three nothing open.
John Russell. We told you about his son Stone Russell playing in the Cal Ripken 10 and under World Series. Well, Stone's team, mostly kids from Bradenton, have won that World Series championship. They beat a team from the state of Washington in the semifinals and beat Jonesboro, Arkansas in the finals. And not only won it, they won it 15 to 2. They're Stone. And they went 6 and 0 in winning the World Series. So the record during the championship run 29 and 2. Now, you know. John Russell wanted to be there, but he's the bench coach of a major league team. He's got responsibilities here, uh, but congratulations. That is really a nice story as once you get into those tournaments, you just don't know how far it's going to go and Stone and his teammates win it all. So yeah. congratulations to the Russell family. That is a nice, nice story. Well done. Stone is a uh, baseball junkie. You always see him around the field in spring training, uh, working with his dad. He's here to Camden Yards. Fun to watch young kids as they to grow up in this baseball life and many times you see him ending up on the major league diamond right well let's not forget another of his children steel russell is yeah. a catcher at delmarva right. he's in the oriole system one on one on steven vote shift on against vote who was just nine for his last 58 but he did hit a two run home run last night that looked like a slider. Yeah, great slider. Now, uh, when Miguel Gonzalez is on, he will bury that slider down and into the lefties, like he did right there, and then come back with the two seam fastball that'll start at the front hip and catch that inside corner. But the fastball command just hasn't quite been there for Gonzalez here recently. Line to center field, chasing Adam Jones, but Adam gets there. And Stephen Vogt is retired for the first out here in the fourth inning. It's now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag O's Couch Cam, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by T-Mobile. Nice folks taking pictures here. Memories at Camden Yards. Stop texting your friend. Watch the game. Well, we all take pictures. I was guilty of that during the Q&A. Snap the picture of Buck and Dan talking to the fans. Hardy's got a hurry and he gets it there just in time. What an arm by J.J. Hardy. Brett Laurie's retired two away. Yeah, one thing uh, about J.J. Hardy that is overlooked. Now, most, one of the most fundamentally sound shortstop, but he has a cannon for an arm. And when he needs to, he can get it over there as well as anybody in the game. Uh, strong arm right over the top. True four seam uh, release most times right on the money. Yeah, he doesn't need to show it off, so he saves it till he needs it. Yeah. I remember a guy who used to be like that. They're at Sogard now, two outs and nobody on. You're talking about me? War number 14. Could I? Th you're, you're saying I saved my arm? I let it go when I needed when you to. you needed it. <laughs> <laughs> no reason to show off the Bordic arsenal. <laughs> I just didn't want to have to ice it for two weeks. This one's lifted the right field. Para in on it. He won't get there. It fell in in front of him. It looked like he was circling to it. And the ball falls in. So Miguel, another two out base hit. Yeah, good pitch. Broken bat. Now he took a deep angle on that off the bat. So Deke maybe can't quite uh, tell where it catches on the bat. And there it just faded. Died in front of him. First step back on that ball. He thinks he's going to run it down in the corner. A deep fly ball. Here's Marcus Simeon. Flight out to Adam Jones. His first at bat. The Athletics have six base hits. Four of them have come with two down in innings. And Sogard, with base hits in the second, now in the fourth, has extended innings after Gonzalez retired the first two batters. So Miguel still in search of his first clean inning. He's took that early lead in last night's ball game. Took a little while, but once the Orioles' offense started heating up, boy, oh boy, they didn't look back. A great offensive output, really, by both teams yesterday's ball game. Good pitch there. Something off speed, and Simeon couldn't reach it. Oh, a good slider. He throws it hard. It's got a nice late finish on that pitch, and right now. It's a real good command of both the curve and that slider. 
Mm. Too soon right there. Miguel trying to keep this close. Bassett has really dialed in over the first three innings. The Orioles have just one infield hit through three innings. And he has thrown two double plays, says Bassett. Brown ball towards Manny to his left. He'll fire to scope. There's an arm. So guard out easily. And the inning ends. So base hit. And one left. Our mouse to do ups as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Gerardo Parra, Adam Jones, and Chris Davis. Level and it's not good enough if we're not playing the postseason every year. Buck Showalter speaking to the season ticket holders today at the State of the Orioles address. He and Dan Duquette talking to the fans, and there's the wild card standings. The Blue Jays lost, so the O's can gain on Toronto. The Angels are in Kansas City, and they are trailing five to one in the second. So an Orioles win, they can gain on both teams ahead of them in the wild card standings, the wild card race. And that was a good statement by Buck Showalter. Those are the season ticket holders, the lifeblood of the organization. And he's saying, look, I don't blame you. We want to win. You should expect us to want to win. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's what's uh, been developed here in Baltimore since Buck Showalter arrived, that winning attitude. And the fans have embraced that, and they expect that now, much like Buck Showalter and his players, really the whole organization. I mean, Baltimore's turned the corner. They want to win, and they're doing things the right way, top to bottom. Now it's just a matter of you know, when they go and make their moves in an offseason, will they catch lightning in a bottle with the players that they're trying to target? And it's worked for them before, and I believe that this team, they continue to play consistent baseball. They may not even great baseball up until September. When they have to take on their division in the month of September, Buck Showalter and Dan Duquette are going to line the right players to come up here and help them out. Both with the offense and pitching. Gerardo Parra with a laser beam line drive to center field for a leadoff single. Well, and the other part of that, too, is uh, several fans did ask Dan Duquette, are you going to go out to look for more help? Left field's been a problem. Starting pitching, uh, are you going to add a pitcher? And Duquette said, well, pitching wise, if we're going to add, it's going to be from within. We think we have some people that can help us. Left field, they brought Urudia up today. They're still trying internally, but don't forget, it's only August 15th. Somebody's going to get through waivers, much like Alejandro Diaz did last year. That if they do want to go outside, somebody they think would be an upgrade from what they have, they still can make a move. Absolutely. But this month is key, Mike. The, this 33 game stretch outside the division, you want to be in position going into that Tampa Bay series uh, heading into September. Sure. I mean, it would be nice if they get on a nice little roll and then. Create that momentum going into the month of September and understand that there will be call ups and reinforcements, you know, to keep some guys fresh and strong. And, you know, I look for uh, some of these young superstars that we've talked about, like Alvarez and Christian Walker, maybe even a Trey Mancini coming up. And uh, we've seen some of the young arms that the Orioles have in the system. That's a broken bat flare to short, and Simeon is there. 
So that's a big out for Bassett. He saws off Adam Jones one away. Para back to first. Don't miss the season's next Ollie's Bargain Night, presented by Ollie's Bargain Outlet on Tuesday as the O's kicks off the two-game interleague series with the Mets. Of course, every Tuesday home game, all the upper reserve seats are just $10. So gather up your family and friends, enjoy a fun, affordable night at Oriole Park. For your tickets, Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. Oakland with a 3 0 lead. Parra on at first, now with one down. Fastball's outside to Chris Davis. Now we saw last night the Orioles uh, took some chances, and typically not an aggressive base running team. Manny Machado made a tag at third base on a very shallow fly ball for him. Uh, Adam Jones picked up a sack fly. And Nice job avoiding a tag. Volk couldn't hang on to it at home. I think these type of situations, good speed at first base. Mix things up, get Parra going. Let's watch him run a little bit. You know, take some uh, well educated chances here. And Bassett looks kind of slow to home, so uh, good opportunity to maybe pick up a run. Well, it's interesting you bring that up. That was one of the questions Buck Showalter was asked by a fan today. Buck, why don't you bunt more? Why don't you run more? And why don't you manufacture more runs? And he said, well, we'd love to do those things with the personnel that can do those things. Yes, we have home run hitters on this team, but let's not forget there are 27 precious outs in a game. We don't like to give any of them up. And that's a philosophy that he has been very consistent with as Davis swings through it. If you lay down a bunt to move a runner, you're giving up an out. Absolutely. If you attempt the stolen base and you're caught stealing, you're giving up an out. Yeah, I, I think a lot of teams have kind of gone to this philosophy where they don't want to give up the outs on sacrifice bunts or force the issue hitting behind runners, uh, maybe even weak hit and runs, and just making sure you get the ball on the ground because those outs are so valuable. Well, Davis gets in the one, and the O's are right back in it. Reddick just turns and watches it fly out of here. Oh, is he hot? There goes number 33, and it's a 3 to 2 game. Well, you're looking at probably the best hitter in the game since the All Star break right now. As hot as you're going to see a hitter. 33 home runs on the season for Chris Davis. The crusher is back. And our Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, Pamela Wendland of Edgewater, has just won another $500. So Davis in his last 12 games, eight home runs and 16 RBIs, 14 home runs, 35 RBIs since the All-Star break. And the Orioles are right back in it. Oh, and Davis, when he gets the arms extended, get out the measuring tape. Get him stay behind the baseball. That is really the key. There's no leak forward. He gets the foot down and he is completely behind the baseball. Maximizing all the strength that he has. And another blast that only the fence prevented it from landing on Utah Street. And with that home run, Chris Davis now leads all of Major League Baseball with 87 RBIs. He moves one ahead of Josh Donaldson, who had an RBI today for the Blue Jays on a sack fly. One and one on scope. Jonathan was hit by a pitch's first at bat. So just the fourth home run allowed by Bassett in his time in the big leagues. And Scope chased the pitch there, two and two. This little slider, looks like a cut action on the end, throws it hard. Just enough movement to keep it off the bat head. And a tapper, that's a foul ball. Vogt tried to get it before it rolled back, had that backspin. Bob Melvin's club, they are now second in the American League in team pitching after giving up the eight runs last night. The Astros moved ahead of them. Houston's team ERA is 3.46. Oakland now 3.50. But unlike the Orioles, the Athletics do not hit home runs, although they do have two here tonight. And Scope goes down on strikes. Real good pitch by Bassett. And two away. Well, our Jeep inside the numbers. And speaking of home runs, yep, the Orioles rely on it. 
They are 51 and 30 when they hit a home run. They have just seven wins all year without a home run. Now 149, fourth most in the American League, and 45% of their runs responsible by the home run swing. So almost half of their runs on long balls. Clevenger first ball swings. Easy play in left for fold. And he's got it, and the inning ends, but a productive inning for the Orioles. A leadoff single by Gerardo Parra, and then Chris Davis, his 33rd of the year, and the Orioles are back in it. It's a 3-2 game. Book your low fare now at southwest.com and by coons.com when you're talking cars, you're talking coons. Nice night, nice summer night at Camden Yards. It's warming up again, humidity on the rise. Big crowd for JJ Hardy replica jersey night. Orioles have been away so much, fans are happy to settle into a nice 10 game homestand. Miguel Gonzalez now needs a shutdown inning. His team is back in it. Strike one to Sam Fold. Burns and Canna will follow. Yeah, that would be a huge boost if Miguel just uh, got him back in the dugout. Get this offense going again. Chris Davis igniting the O's. That two run homer. Miguel has not had a three up, three down inning. He's had three, four batter innings. And he was helped out in the third one with two down after the solo home runs by Fold and then Reddick. Butler tried to stretch a single into a double, and Parra got him easily at second base. That was the final out. And a tapper, that is a foul ball. Bose fans never miss a game update behind the scenes moments or exclusive contests just follow at mass and Orioles on Twitter for all of the latest Orioles buzz again that's ask mass and Orioles on Twitter. You're not on Twitter are you? I'm not no. You would lead the league in followers if you got on. I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> you should sign up and have a race with cakes. <laughs> no. A couple good split fingers here from Miguel at the bottom of the zone. Fold doing a nice job laying off. Like his uh, execution, though, getting ahead and now working the bottom of the zone. You see uh, first two pitches on the plate. Yeah, quality pitches to get ahead and then working the edge. He missed the plate outside. Clevenger set up out there, but it missed. So fold. About to see the seventh pitch in this at bat.
Bounce towards second base. Scope charges in to play the hop. Nicely done. He changed direction so the hop would go right to him. And he gets full for the out one away. Yeah, it's, really, it's a lot of fun watching this Orioles infield. Uh, great talent. See so some young players that just get better and better on a daily basis. Jonathan Scope, obviously, one of those. But J.J. Hardy, real the leader as far as fundamentals in the game, reading balls off the bat, positioning perfectly. And Manny Machado and Jonathan Scope have learned just by watching Hardy. We've seen them get themselves in much better positions to uh, be more consistent fielders. And once again, this Orioles infield, one of the best in baseball. Ball one to Billy Burns, who tripled and scored, leading off the game in the first. He's also grounded out. And a weak swing, trying to slap it. Miguel now 31. He's in his fourth season with the O's. Took him a while to establish himself with consistency. And the 2012 season, that has to be one of the, the best feel good stories of a guy getting a break. He was signed to a minor league contract after pitching for Mexico in the Caribbean World Series. Fred Ferreira saw him, recommended him to Dan Duquette. And when the Orioles went to spring training in 2012, he did not see the major league camp one day. He was in the minor league camp. Then when the season began, they didn't have a team for him. And eventually, he would find a team and he would begin the show. You know, we got something here. Got called up, made his debut in Toronto. Buck Showalter liked what he saw and they decided to Send them back, get him in the rotation, and here he is, a member of the rotation. But you talk about a guy coming out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And first impressions make such an impact. I remember that opportunity Gonzalez had in Toronto and that calm demeanor, that fearless presence on the mound, just unflappable. And that really caught the attention of Buck Show Walter and said, hey, we got something here. And Gonzalez has run with it. He's had great success with the Orioles. A little bit of a bump in the road here right now, but uh, a lot of the success the Orioles have had, you can thank Miguel Gonzalez. I mean, he's been uh, a mainstay in this rotation for the past few seasons. Well, Buck uses that phrase all the time when talking about players saying, well, if you'd play me more, I'd play better. And Buck says, well, if you'd play better, I'll play you more. <laughs> right. so it really is all up to the players. Burns can fly second in the league in steals. Here's Canna. Of course, Miguel is real good at neutralizing the running game. Almost certain they will test Clevenger here with a 23 stolen baseman and Burns on it first. Fastball a little high, I guess. Looked like it cut the plate in half. Canna has grounded out twice. RBI ground out came in the first inning. And Burns getting a little antsy over there at first base. Clevenger well aware of Burns' speed. A lot of times catchers will call fastballs, unfortunately just missing with that fastball in. A little bit of a lean right there. Burns leading all rookies with the 23 stolen bases leads all rookies with multi hit games with 33 and he wants to uh, run down Ricky Henderson best base dealer of all time his rookie season stole 33 bases so he'd like to uh, make a push here he's going got a good jump clever just throw they won't get him he got a real good jump and the throw was high. Scope had to wait for it and then apply the tag. Well, real tough pitch for Clevenger to handle. Handled it about as well as he could. Slider down and away. Great jump from Burns. Look at those feet. Those are some quick feet getting down the line. And really not a bad throw from Clevenger. It's just a slider down and away. And when he started to come out of his position, it's just too long. Uh, the ball was caught away from his body and it just takes too long to make that transfer. And right there, speed wins. So number 24 for Burns. He gets in the scoring position with one down. Old foul. That'll be well back in the crowd. A lot of orange here tonight. Well, I 
don't think Orioles fans uh, really love this time of year. It's nice to feel this kind of almost tension, electricity in the city. And some people are a little upset at the Orioles. They wish they'd have, you know, one of these unbelievable seasons where they win 110 ball games. But the Orioles have been inconsistent, and the fans have been used to this winning, and they're they're excited. They want to keep winning. They want this team to turn the corner. Ball got away from Clevenger, and he didn't realize it. So that allows Burns to go to third with one down. As Miguel has fallen behind three and one. Yeah, the breaking ball that uh, just gets through the five hole on Clevenger. Can't quite get down enough on it, even though it looks like he's in a good position. Just a little late getting the glove down. Might have caught the leather, but bent it back. And the ball scoots through, and now Burns standing on third. Clevenger charged with a pass ball. And now the Orioles draw the infield in trying to cut down this run. Orioles scored in the bottom of the fourth. Miguel looking for a shutdown inning here in the top of the fifth. Kind of requesting time as Miguel took too long. Bringing that infield in. I mean, this is a crucial time in the ball game. Every run is going to matter. He did in last night's game. And it's upstairs for a walk. So he's walked back to back hitters. So the Athletics will have first and third with one down. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Orioles. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Oh, look at the uh, young lady on the right. She saw they were on the big screen in center field. Yeah, that's me up there. That's me up there. Let's go O's. Orioles now move the infield back, hoping for a ground ball to turn two. Here's Josh Reddick. Ball one inside. Well, there's T.J. McFarland getting loose. Buck mentioned last night after the game, McFarland was the only reliever who did not pitch last night. He was held back for today just in case. With every game so important, the leash uh, not quite as long. Foul back to the left. One and one on Reddick, who homered his last at bat. Yeah, I think uh, Buck Walter has a great sense and feel for his rotation. He understands when they're fatiguing. He has a great feel for the innings that put stress on. The starting pitchers. Obviously, the pitch count comes into play, but in tight ball games and Buck's gut feeling, yeah, he's not going to hesitate to get a pitcher out of there. Unfortunately, uh, for the Orioles, a lot of pitchers used in last night's ball game. You want to make sure you stay strong. You know, over abuse that bullpen. They have been stretched out a little bit here recently. Well, and the other part of this too is that they now have two. Optionable relievers if they need to get a fresh arm. Up until the moves at the trade deadline, all seven relievers were out of options. All three. And they're not biting on that split finger from a Gonzalez. Not good at bats. Of course, the Athletics known for the patient ABs. Burns at third, Canna at first with one down. And it's outside. He has walked the bases loaded three consecutive walks. Fans getting frustrated. Bo's got back in the game on the Davis home run, and now Oakland is threatening for some add on runs here in the fifth. Dave Wallace out for a chat. Yeah, just uh, obviously, opportunity to give him a little breath. Don't let this inning get away. Let's see the amount of pitches thrown. 15 balls out of the 22 pitches thrown in this inning. So the command not there. Gonna find the zone and make some quality pitches. One pitch away from getting out of this inning with a ground ball. Trust the defense. Let them do the work.
Well, he's got the guy at the plate that you'd like to see in this spot if he can do it. Billy Butler has bounced into 19 double plays on the year, the most on the Athletics team. We saw Burns at third, Canna at second, Reddick at first. Big moment in this game. Breaking ball stays inside. There's a left handed batter on deck. If Miguel can't get Butler, this might be his last hitter. Brown ball at third. He goes to second for one. Scope back to first. He popped it. He still got him. There's an inning ending double play and Miguel gets out of it. And what a great job by Scope. He didn't have the full grip, so instead of rushing, he waited. Yeah, there you go, Manny. A nice job keeping that glove down. And Scope, well, a double pump as Reddick tries to take him out. What well, a beautiful double play by the Orioles. Double play that ended the inning and they got it done. That's all that matters. They sure did. A little tester from Butler. Manny, a little short hop where he's got to keep that glove down. And Reddick coming in hard. Jonathan Scope showing off the arm once again. Clears the body, still has enough time with the slow footed Butler getting down the line, able to complete that double play. Huge double play with the bases loaded. Look at the bottom of the screen. Dave Wallace and Miguel Gonzalez here. There's Bobby Dickerson talking to Jonathan Scope. Brady's in the background trying to pick up anything he can. You don't think these guys care about what they're doing? Are you kidding me? Everything matters in this game, and the coaches are on top of it. They want to keep these players on top of it, show the importance of every pitch and every out. Well, that may be a game-changing play. We'll see what the Orioles now do at the plate. Here's Hardy taking a strike. J.J. bounced out the shortstop his first at-bat. Yerudia follows, then Rymel. Breaking ball outside. Bassett allowed the two run home run to Davis in the fourth. That got the O's back in it. He was allowed only three hits. Well, we saw a lot of swings of momentum in yesterday's ball game. And fortunately for the Orioles, able to come on top on the end. A nice advantage playing in your home park. Already in this ball game, there have been some momentum shifts with the A's jumping out to the early lead. The big home run by Davis to kind of ignite this team, get a little bit more confidence going. And then that huge double play might be enough to take the wind out of the A's sails. Now, the A's are a struggling team right now. They have not been playing good baseball. And when you go up against them and show that you're going to continue to compete, like in that extra inning win last night, and now here battling back in this game. And a lot of times you can put a team to rest. How did you like that defensive swing? <laughs> <laughs> Do what you can to keep in the bat alive. Oh, two strikes. I better foul this off. Yeah. 
Bob Melvin's team has lost four in a row. They're winless on this road trip. And two and two on JJ. Line harder foul down the right side. And JJ about to see the seventh pitch of the at bat. You know he's got to do something big tonight. Has to. It's his ninety. It is jersey was given away. JJ see the Nissan pit strap now always taking that first pitch but missed the cookie on that sixth offering. Pretty good fastball though two strikes you got to protect a lot of times not willing to get the bat head out in front. Well, good breaking ball gets him as he swings through it. Oh his money off speed pitch big curve ball take a look at the Nissan pit strap Hardy working a big uh, working the pitcher for seven pitches and here the big curve ball. Nice finish down and away to get Hardy. Bassett some uh, bad body language there almost as if he might have pulled something. Kurt Young staring at him. And now Vote's going to go out and ask him, are you okay? So look at this big guy's delivery. High knee kick. Get the fingers tight. Get on top of that curveball. Is downhill over that front knee, but it didn't look like uh, at the end taking a deep breath, maybe stretching out the lower back or something. Here's Henry Arudia. Just got promoted today. He was off to some kind of tear in August for AAA Norfolk. In fact, since July 31st, he batted at a 347 clip. Well, they've been kind of waiting for Yerudia to really uh, demonstrate some power. You know, he can hit, puts on a show in batting practice, and to really kind of refine his skills. And Triple A started to take off. His opportunities he's had at the major league level, Bathead would kind of drag through the zone. A lot of opposite field base hits. They want to see a big corner outfielder driving the ball in the gap. Show a little bit of that power. He has incredible leverage. If he can use, learn to get that bad hat out in front, like I think they feel he's doing. That's why this promotion he could uh, really make an impact on this team. Swings through it. His only big league experience was in 2013 with the O's. He had. 16 base hits, 15 were singles, and he had a triple. And as Mike mentioned, most of them went to left field. And he works the count full. And I know we talk about this team, and we mentioned it in the open about uh, thinking about the long ball, but. When the Orioles hitters step into the box. They're not thinking about hitting home runs. They want to have quality at bats. They want to work a starting pitcher. You really had thought he had worked ball four, and he's rung up by Adam Hamari. He didn't like that pitch. Fastball. Boat setting up down and away. Looks like it might catch like a quadrant in the upper end corner. But a very tough pitch. He played umpire. Right behind it, though, his head position on the inside corner. So back to back K's four in the game for Bassett. Here's Reimold, the number nine batter. First ball swinging, gets a curve ball, and he pops it up. Sogard is out there. The second baseman has it for the out. And there's a three up, three down inning for Bassett, his first in the game.
Sam Fold goes deep. It's his second home run of the year to give the A's a 2 nothing lead. Third inning, same inning. Josh Reddick puts the ball to land out in the Orioles' bullpen, and the A's once again strike. But Chris Davis, the crusher, is back, staying red hot with a two-run blast to get the Orioles a little bit closer. Remember, Geico 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com for a free rate quote. Well, more of our servicemen here tonight on this Saturday night. From the Naval Academy. Here's Stephen vote against Miguel. So Miguel got out of that jam. Bases loaded one down got the double play ball. Now let's see if he can. Put together a shutdown inning. He has not yet had a three up three down inning and there's a strike taken by vote. Dave Wallace was in his ear pretty good that last inning. He got himself in a jam but then found a way to get himself out of it. So a nice little. Confidence boost for Miguel Gonzalez and I like the fact that they sent him back out here for the sixth. Line foul the other way. Miguel nine wins in eight losses. He's 10 above 500 in his career. 39 and 29. He's just in one of those stretches where the mistakes hurt. Now mistakes always hurt, but in this stretch, if he's going to throw a bad pitch, it usually finds the barrel of the bat of the opposing hitter. A lot of pitching royalty in Orioles history in the ballpark tonight. Ben McDonald's in town doing radio for the O's and Mike Messina's at the yeah. game tonight. Swing and a miss. What a pitch there. Good call by Clevenger as he came in off speed after missing badly with a fastball. Well, I like the fact that he's been using this breaking ball more in the game. Just 75 miles an hour. And it really gets a hitter off balance. You see how far out in front vote is. Well, the location, maybe not. That great, but the velocity perfect. I'll get the big first out of this inning. Here's Brett Laurie upstairs with a fastball one and oh. Laurie struck out in the second, grounded out in the fourth. Staying on the outside corner, that's a good idea. Clevenger requested time. He's not wearing the uh, fake stirrups tonight. Maybe he heard us. Yeah, it's a baseball <laughs> thing. You know, he probably didn't get any hits in last night's ball game. Yeah, he did pick up a base hit. A superstitious. I guarantee if he hit a home run or a couple hits last night, he'd be wearing the same socks. Now, Sogard is on deck. He has the real team socks on. In the old school. Yeah, those are those are baseball socks. Yeah, those are the ones I wore back in the 70s. In the 70s? Well, the uniforms were from the 70s. Oh. I was in the minor <laughs> leagues in the 80s. And we we get the I, hand I thought I was older than you. I, I was about to get be in a good mood to find out differently. Yeah, there's the yellow stirrups. Now are they allowed to basically just wear whatever they want yeah, as long as like it's it. a team color? I, I always thought it was a uniform. Yeah. <laughs> the seventh pitch about to be thrown to Brett Laurie, who just drive the clubby crazy. His uniform is always filthy. Mm -hmm. And he is a high energy player. And the hopes, he's been in a couple different organizations now. And everybody that gets a hold of him hopes he can kind of harness that energy because he does have a lot of skill. You talk about placing a pitch perfectly thrown by Miguel, back to back K's and two down. Well, showing great command of that slider, perfect spot. The second pitch. 
was a strike with a slider on the outside corner and he basically filled the same hole to get Lowry locked up. Great late movement. Perfect pitch for the second out. So here is Eric Sogard who is two for two. He has come up in the exact same situation for a third consecutive time after vote and Laurie were retired to begin innings. He singled in the second singled in the fourth to extend them. Bit high, two and one. What a nice talk with uh, Caleb Joseph this afternoon. Just about pitch calling, and he was talking about a couple of the Orioles pitchers that you know need to utilize that breaking ball more frequently because you have a fastball slider pitcher like Miguel, this two seamer that stays on one plane, and the slider almost stays on the same plane. So you need something to offset. That and the slow curveball has been a big pitch. And we've seen pitchers against the Orioles have great success with the curve. And we've seen pitchers on the Orioles have success, like Tillman with the big curveball. Wei in Chen, when he flips it up there more consistently, gets hitters off balance. And now Miguel tonight, his off speed pitches, the spin balls, curve, and the slider, best pitches of the game. Well, three and two with two down, looking for his first three up, three down inning. And again, time requested by Clevenger. Maybe had second thoughts of what he put down for a sign. High foul that's well back out of play. So great to look around this full ballpark and see all this orange. Yeah, we're starting to think about the postseason. And you know, the uh, orange JJ Hardy jerseys are out the house. Sure. <laughs> Another full count pitch to Sogar. And he got him. There's a real good splitter. And Sogar swings through it. Miguel's first three up, three down inning. He strikes out the side. Our Honda do ups, top of the lineup Machado, Para, and Jones. A Norfolk manager Ron Johnson, who has picked up his 285th win as the Norfolk manager, most now in franchise history, as he passes Gary Allenson, Frank Verdi, 282. The Tides having a real good year despite all the up and down players coming to the big club. They are 19 games above 500. Ron Johnson, pretty impressive, right? 
I mean, what an asset to Buck Showalter. Uh, a tribute to his coaching abilities. Been doing it for like 22 years in the minor leagues. Well, you look at the AAA club, and you got Ron and Mike Griffin. Mike Griffin pitched in the big leagues. And then you go down to the AA club where Gary Kendall has really settled in, does a great job as the manager. And Alan Mills, your former teammate, is the pitching coach there. He's pitched on playoff teams in the big yeah. leagues. These guys know what it takes to get it done here, and that's what you need. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, Ron Johnson and obviously Mike Griffin have done a, an incredible job. We've seen a lot of great young pitchers come through the organization and really uh, kind of establish themselves through the tutelage of Mike Griffin. But Ron Johnson, you know, experience at the major league level as a player. Mm -hmm. Coached first base at the major league level with the Boston Red Sox for a couple of years. Coached in the minor leagues, managed, has over 1,500 wins in the minor leagues as a manager. So just an unbelievable wealth of knowledge that so many of the Orioles players have learned from and, you know, brought that up to the big league level. And I think the fact that Buck Showalter and Ron Johnson are on the same page, they bring them up and there's, you know, they're, they're not missing a beat. They understand what's expected. Um, and I think there's really good continuity in the whole organization. Manny out in front of a breaking ball and he pulls it foul. You know, player development is very important for an organization like the Orioles that can't go out and just outspend your competition. You have to develop. And if that means developing for trades like they did with Para, well, so be it. As long as you get somebody that can play here, that's what it's all about. Three and two on Manny. I mean, Zach Davies may turn out to be a good pitcher, but the Orioles got a proven big league hitter for a playoff run. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Par is on deck. He'll bat next. Good at bat for Manny. And the 3 2 is hit towards shortstop. There's Simeon, and he gets it to first. Well, here's Buck Showalter commenting on the job of his AAA manager, Ron Johnson. Might be as tough a job as there is in uh, head coach in sports, managing AAA. It's hard. And he never has a bad day. Picks up the phone on the first ring. I don't care what time of the day it is. And it's always got an upbeat thought. Every player that comes from there is, speaks highly. And he's not afraid to call BS when it's time to call BS, too. And that is important because I, I think what Buck was alluding to there, AAA players, most of them probably feel privately, I should be in the big leagues. What am I doing here? And Rod Johnson has to get them ready to play a game every day. Yeah. And I think every once in a while, a little dose of reality does help a player. Well, it sure does. And I, I think the fact that AAA has proven to be the level where so many moves are made and opportunities are given at the major league level that it probably might make it a little easier for Ron Johnson saying, listen, you will get an opportunity to play at the major league level if you perform and play well on a daily basis here in AAA. Prove that you know how to play the game. Prove that you have a good skill set and prove that you want to win because that's what they're doing in Baltimore. And if you take that up there, you might not have an opportunity. You might have an opportunity to stay with the Orioles or even showcase your own skills and play in the big leagues with somebody else. Remember when Alan Mills first came back in the organization, he was the pitching coach at Aberdeen, short season club. So you get a lot of high draft picks there. Uh, that go through in the New York Penn League as Parra takes strike one, two, and one. And he had this top pitcher that simply wouldn't listen to him. So Mills, he said, okay, here's the baseball, go pitch. And the kid really struggled. And finally, as Parra rips it to right field, towards the scoreboard, it is gone! It's out of here! It hit the fence just over the scoreboard, and we are tied. Once again, the long ball going through for the Orioles. It is a rocket off the bat of Para. Just enough to get up over that wall for his 11th home run of the season. And another $500 to our Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, Pamela Wedlin of Edgewater. So there you go. You develop a Zach Davies to trade him for Gerardo Para in a pennant race, and there's his second Oriole home run. And more importantly, it ties this game at three. So just like last night, the Orioles have come back. Parra going again. 
be a huge lift. Take a look at this swing. A two seam fastball. Comes back over just enough. Not a terrible pitch, but Parra pulls the hands in tight and gets the barrel on it. Smokes it up over the scoreboard. A solo shot. Adam Jones back to back breaking balls he swings through. Here's Pat Vendetti just up from Triple A. Warming up left handed. However, he also throws right handed. And on cue, he shows you. And Diddy was just called back up today. There were some flight problems getting him and Dan Otero here, but obviously they have arrived. Last night, the Athletics had a six man bullpen. Tonight, they have an eight man bullpen. His last night starter, Brad Mills, has been sent out. Ground ball towards short is Simeon. Jones is retired for the second out in the sixth inning. Well, on Wednesday, all fans at the 705 game against the Mets will receive a Manny Machado, Jonathan Scope handshake Orioles t shirt. Celebrate the young star's signature on field greeting with this fun addition to your Birdland wardrobe. Now get your tickets now, Orioles.com, or call 888 848 Bird. You know, that should be a breaking it down with Bordy said. The handshake? Yeah. You're, that, that's a real good uh, a segment for you. <laughs> All right. I'll throw that by the producer. See what they think. Well, I think they might like it. Mm -hmm. A couple of popular players, a popular broadcaster. Chris Davis, one out of two with a two run home run. Hearted ball right into the shift. They're so guard. And he gets the hustling Davis for the out and the inning ends but the Orioles back even Gerardo Parra his second home run as an Oriole has tied this game at three. By the Maryland Fire Chiefs and Maryland State Firemen's Associations. Email mdfirevolunteer at gmail.com to volunteer with your local fire, rescue, and EMS. Big crowd on hand on this Saturday night. Uh, Mike Messina, we mentioned him earlier. There he is with his wife. A great round of applause. They showed uh, some of his highlights up on the Diamond Vision. Fans appreciate what Mike Mussina did here with one of the great pitchers of all time. And I saw a ground ball to a shortstop named Mike Bordick. They got a big out for a Mike Mussina win. There's the Moose. With the Montoursville hat on. Yeah. It almost looks like a Milwaukee Brewer hat, but he's very active in the, the youth stuff in his hometown of Pennsylvania. So Miguel stays on. Falls behind Simeon two and one. Fold is on deck, then Billy Burns. 
So 103 pitches now. He was at exactly 100 through six. Fouls it off. Now you know that pitch had a lot of movement as McFarland's up for a second time. He tried to square it up and it ends up in the out deck circle behind him. Yeah. Well, nice late movement on the slider. We talked about it this whole game really has been his best pitch. And that curveball. We starting to flash plus. Fastball misses ball three. And I'll tell you, if he can harness that fastball command, which you just Sense he's really close because when the breaking ball starts finishing properly and you get that nice late movement, that means you're finishing out in front, and ultimately it's going to help that fastball come in a lot better. You hear many times when pitchers get in a little struggle with their command, catcher will call a breaking ball because they have to. They're forced to finish out in front and over their front side. And the midi giving a souvenir to a youngster. He's got a fan for life now. And he got him. Oh, what a pitch. You saw Simeon reach for it just to try to foul it off, and he missed it. Four straight strikeouts for Miguel. Take a look at the Nissan pitch track. He is just working the perimeter of the strike zone with all of his offerings here, finishing him off with probably the best fastball of the game, 92 miles an hour. Excellent location. And that is four consecutive strikeouts. Whatever Dave Wallace told him after he walked Josh Reddick to load the bases, as Fold bounces at the scope, there's two quick outs. He has retired every batter since. Well, as promised earlier in the game, we have selected the Data Strong fan photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag O's Couch Cam. And you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. Well, maybe, maybe we could he could take a picture and text it to Mike Bordick, who could send it to the O's couch cam, and he could be on a telecast. Yeah. Well, he's already on a telecast. <laughs> so six in a row retired by Miguel since that mound visit. And the first of the six, Billy Butler, it was an inning-ending double play. Athletics have not scored since two outs in the third when Reddick hit the second of the two solo home runs in that inning. Hit towards Machado, just slapped at it. And Manny guns it across, and there's a three up, three down inning for Miguel. His second consecutive inning, retiring the side in order. Seventh inning stretch at Camden Yards. We've got a good one. Birds coming up in a tie game.
back at Camden Yards on this Saturday night, and it is a good one. 3 3 game as the birds come up in the bottom of the seventh. Jim Hunter and Mike Bordick. Uh, we've been talking about this all year. We talked about it earlier. Home runs are good when you get them. Yeah. <laughs> the Orioles are getting the timely home runs. I'll tell you what, jump on Chris Davis's bat because he is red hot. Another home run in tonight's ball game. A two run shot, and then Parra getting, to it, getting into the mix with a laser beam out over the scoreboard. So, uh, yeah, when you can hit the home runs, go ahead and hit them. Be nice to see the Orioles string together some more hits, though. Mm -hmm. Put a little bit more pressure on this A's team. And, uh, you know, like last night, let's catch him in hits and then see what happens after that. But what an impressive job by Miguel Gonzalez. How about the turnaround? He wow. was scuffling Good. early on, and all of a sudden he settled down. He gets through seven innings. Well, the huge double play there with the bases loaded and one out. He comes up with the big pitch. He gets the double play out of the inning, and now he's retired six in a row. So, uh, you know, I think words of wisdom from pitching coach Dave Wallace to help Miguel, but uh, a lot of it done on his own. Grit and desire out there. Nice bounce back start from Miguel. And giving his team a great opportunity to win. Yeah, Buck Showalter will look for his team to get a lead here so Miguel can win his 10th. Scope will swing through it on one. Jonathan has reached. He was hit by a pitch in the second, then struck out in the fourth. The Orioles have only four hits, but two have left the ballpark. And a base hit to left field as Simeon couldn't reach it. So the Orioles have the go-ahead run on, leading off in the seventh. Well, get ready to show your orange from head to toe on Friday night as the first 20,000 fans 15 and over at the game that night against the Twins 705 game will receive a pair of Orioles high socks. So make a fashion statement and enjoy a great night of Orioles baseball tickets are going fast so don't delay. Get online at Orioles.com or call 888-848-BIRD. You and I should wear those. This ball sit to left field chasing folded to the corner. It is caught. What a play by folded scope has to get back to first base and he is going to be doubled up. What a play by fold running into the corner. He robs Clevenger and then he doubles up scope who went too far around second base. Well, fold a great defender and this is an unbelievable play. Great concentration. He went a long way. Runs into the wall and then a perfect throw into the relay man Jonathan scope like everybody in the stadium thinking there is no way he's going to come up with that ball. Chris Bassett loves the defense by fold. Huge play. By the A's huge double play. To stop a potential big inning. So just like that two down and the base is empty. Here's Hardy. J.J. is 0 for 2. He has struck out. He has grounded out. Blows a fastball by him for strike two. Darren O'Day getting loose, so it looks like the night for Miguel Gonzalez is over. And then Diddy gets up again, the ambidextrous pitcher. It's still a very manageable pitch count. It's 88 pitches. Hardy protects the outside corner. So Miguel goes seven innings. Last time he went seven innings was in his last win at Tampa on July 25th, where he went seven and two thirds in that one. Talking over with Chris Tillman on the bench. Bassett has done a fine job. He's just allowed a couple of home runs, which have tied the game. And Oakland unable to get add on runs. And Hardy down on strikes. He's 0 for 3 in the inning end. So a base hit, but none left. We'll head to the eighth. Oakland and Baltimore tied at 3.
through this ball game, but he came up with some big punch outs early in the game. Lowry goes down on a high fastball, and then he strikes out four A's in a row. Lowry down again. Sogard goes down, and then Simeon. Now Miguel Gonzalez settled in and pitched a splendid game. Seven strong innings, six hits, three earned runs. See the breaking ball, 37%. He was on the curve and the slider in this ball game. And now it's time for our AT&T call to the bullpen. AT&T, proud partner of the Baltimore Orioles. AT&T mobilizing your world. Well, Darren O'Day, eight consecutive scoreless appearances. He is on with locating the slider. A two-seam fastball rising at the top of the zone as well. All from the sidearm slot. 55% fastballs, 44% sliders from Darren O'Day and take a look at the monster numbers 1.22 earned run average five wins has a couple saves as well 57 punch outs just 11 walks holding righties down to just a 174 batting average most of his outs in the air 64 percent so here's Mark Canna to lead off And a strike in the outside corner that Canada does not agree with Adam Hamari. Canna is 0 for 1 against Darren O'Day. Strike on the corner. Well, the Orioles bullpen, Mike, since the All-Star break has been fabulous. Only three teams with lower bullpen ERA since the All-Star break. And all those teams uh, fighting to make it to the postseason. The Orioles have really stepped it up. They've been solid in the bullpen pretty much all year long. But Brock O'Day and Britain have done an outstanding job. But Brian Mattis, I think, has been an unsung hero out there. Just three runs given up in his last 21 outings and it seems like every time they reach down to the minor leagues they're bringing up a power arm somebody that really uh, works well in the bullpen Michael Givens has been outstanding now Garcia who's been on the disabled list last night's outing wow did he have great movement on his fastball so things looking up for the Orioles bullpen if you want to make it to the prom promised land you better have strength there the Orioles certainly do. And a base hit up the middle. So Canna gets on on an 0 2 pitch, which has suddenly become the dreaded count of Orioles pitchers. And in a tie game, the leadoff man on in the eighth. You can follow the O's wherever you are with MLB.com at bat. It is the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Big crowd on hand tonight. And here is Josh Reddick, who has only seen O'Day twice, and he is 0 for 2. Double play ball. Hardy, scope, back to first, and he got him. What an arm. <laughs> Jonathan Scope has. Yeah, you give him a little extra time on a double play, and he's going to a little extra load and uncoil a bazooka across the field. There is some hair coming across the diamond there on that baseball. <laughs> the strongest arms in the game. You love to see Manny Machado and Scope lined up side by side and see who can throw it the hardest. The great young players with two of the strongest arms you're going to see in baseball. So here's Billy Butler who has had the biggest at bat in this game from the Orioles perspective. Bases loaded one down in the fifth with Oakland leading three to two. He bounced into an inning ending double play. Butler uh, had a tough series. He's had a tough year. I mean, uh, very disappointing year after the A's. Brought him over to really try to bolster this offense. Uh, in this series, been thrown out at the plate. He got thrown out at second base trying to stretch that double, and then of course uh, paid to do the damage in big situations. And 
It's into a double play. Won't chase the fastball. Ball and two strikes. O'Day has handled Butler in their head to heads. Butler one for 11 against Darren. And he got him. Breaking ball. And Butler swings through it. So a good inning for O'Day. A base hit. But a double play and a strikeout. Bottom of the eighth coming up. O'Day takes care of Butler. It's uh, into the seventh inning. We completed the seventh inning. And the uh, Orioles have a great opportunity here. And you saw the big crowd at Camden Yards 44,028 in attendance tonight. Here's Chris Bassett, 91 pitches through seven innings, bullpen activity behind him. Henry Yerudi in his first game for the O's called up today. He was actually here yesterday with the new taxi squad rule. So he took BP with the team and Today he was activated. Junior Lake was optioned out. Zach Britton getting up. Hopefully for a save, if not to save a tie. Reimold is on deck, then Machado. High pop up to left. Sam Full just about where he had him played. He's got it for the out. And one away. We hope you can join us tomorrow for more O's action. Game three of the four game series. It'll be Wei in Chen on the mound against Kendall Graveman. Our coverage on Masson begins at 1 o'clock with O's extra presented by Southwest. And then game coverage at 1.30. We've got all the access you need right here on Masson. Here's another look at the big crowd. Nolan Reimold 0 for 1. He's walked and popped up. And there's Pat Venditti again warming up. Good thing he can throw uh, lefty and righty. He's been up three times. Bassett's done a real good job. None on two and one on Rymold. 
And a good eye. And a weak pop up on a breaking ball. And with Sogard, he's got it for the out and two down. That's the second time Bassett tonight has gotten Rymold on that exact pitch. Well, he's been able to uh, really improve his breaking balls, the curveball and the slider. Good success here. The last two hitters on that slider. Good location on the outer third. Well, does Manny have another magical moment in that bat? He won last night with a walk off. He could give the Orioles the lead here in the eighth. Fastball there for a strike. Still at 94 in the eighth inning. This young man has a future. Mm. And I think it's here. Fastball in the outside corner for a strike. Deception plays a big part in uh, having success at the major league level. And you know, as tall as Bassett and with that funky delivery, it's a little tougher for hitters to pick up that release point. Flashes the glove way out in front. That high front side leg kick. Well, if you look at this arm and you wonder how did he last till the 16th round in 2011? And a big curveball to get Manny in a three up three down inning. Very impressive outing for Chris Bassett. We head to the ninth in a tie game three three. is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com and by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. You can get all kinds of memorabilia here and shirts and banners and flags at the ballpark. 3-3 game. And a new pitcher comes on at Zach Britton. Yeah, it's time for a little relief for your car too. Visit Jiffy Lube for regular oil changes and help prevent damage and wear to your engine. Jiffy Lube, drive in today. Well, Zach Britton, not in a safe situation, but hey, you got to slam the door, so why not bring in the best? 91% fastballs, the power heater, mid 90s with great late action, 191 earned run average, 28 saves. That's third in the American League. You see that he is a ground ball pitcher. 79% of his outs on the ground, holding lefties down to just a 109 batting average. First batter is Stephen Vogt and gets ahead on one. Well, last night for Zach Britton, uh, one of those examples that baseball can just be sometimes not fair. I mean, Zach Britton made great pitches. Baseball didn't even get out of the infield. Unfortunately, uh, wasn't able to come up with that save. Fortunately, the Orioles kept battling and came out with a big win. And there you see one inning, four hits, a couple runs, both of them earned on Britain. Three pitch strikeout. 
And Mike, what was interesting there, a couple of breaking balls it looked like. They're definitely the middle pitch was a breaking ball. Yeah. yeah changed the look a little bit. Even though uh, last night they were getting a lot of hits off the end of the bat, staying on the infield. Hey, change it up. Let them think about something else. And Zach Britton has a nasty breaking ball, especially all you're used to seeing is 97 mile an hour fastball. And it broke right into the eye level of Adam Hamari, the home plate umpire. Very well presented by Clevenger. Brett Laurie, a big bouncer to short. Two down in the ninth. When big crowds like this, you like to see wins. See if the Orioles have another walk off in them in the bottom of the ninth. The Athletics have had just one base runner since they loaded the bases in the fifth. That was the leadoff single by Canna in the eighth against O'Day, but Reddick on the very next pitch bounced into a double play to erase the runner. Eric Sogard now. This is the first at bat for Sogard against Britain. And Venditti continues working on his game. The right handed Venditti this time. There's a strike. Well, Bassett for eight innings has only had 103 pitches, but with young pitchers, usually that's about the limit. Got it by him. 96, 2 and 2. In the outfield, very shallow for an Oakland hitter. Rymold shallow and towards the line of left. Adam very shallow in center field and Parr has shortened up in right. Strike three called. And Zach Britton comes on and has a three up, three down ninth inning. So here we go. Strikeout to end the top half. Parra, Jones, and Davis coming up in the bottom half. Can the O's walk it off? Game, Rick. Another thriller, edge of your seat. <laughs> and the Orioles have done it again behind Chris Davis, his 33rd home run of the season. Draws it back, a two run shot to three to two, and Para hits his second home run to tie it. We go to the bottom of the ninth again, tied. Imagine that. Another chance to win it in the bottom half of the ninth inning without extra innings. Let's go upstairs now to Jim Hunter and Mike Bordick for the bottom half of the ninth as the Orioles try to rally for another victory. All right, Tom and Rick, hopefully we'll send it back to you for a quick happy recap here as the Orioles will try to walk it off. And here is Pat Venditti, the switch pitcher. Yeah, and he had great success in AAA this season, 23 games. Picked up a win, 155 earned run average, 40 punch outs and just 15 walks. Pretty impressive stuff. Now, he isn't overpowering, but has learned how to pitch. 30 years old, so he's had enough experience. And yeah, that glove he can switch around. 
All right, now in the clubhouse each day, the clubs post their lineups. Now the Oakland lineup, you see on the left of the lineup, the blue, those are switch hitters, the yellow are lefties, and the black lettering, those are right-handed batters. Now look at the bullpen. I've never seen this before. A switch pitcher. Venditti is in blue on the lineup. I get, you're you're going to see that once every maybe 15 years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> That's great. Last one I remember, uh, Gene Harris. Wasn't it? Uh, Greg Harris. Or Greg Harris, yeah. Yeah, and that was 1995. That was 20 years ago. So he'll face Para as a left-handed pitcher. Then Jones on deck as a right-handed pitcher. And the breaking ball is in there for a strike. It has a sidearm delivery from both sides. Lefty is going to throw that slider more frequently than the fastball from the right side. That equal distribution between fastball and slider. Para tied the game in the six with this blast. Rocket getting on an inside fastball. So 0 and 2 on Para. A little bit low. Fights off the breaking ball down the line. Fold is over, hoping for a play. Reaches up, and it's out of play. He just ran out of room. Yeah, I think that's the only reason Fold doesn't catch everything. The stadiums uh, stop him. If not, I think he'd be running up in the stands. He is all over the place. <laughs> that fan in the head. And the one two is fouled off. Para protecting the inside corner. Michael Gibbons now getting loose in case this game remains tied. Then Diddy is out of Omaha, Nebraska, and he pitched in college at Creighton. Outside, good take by Parr. A pretty nice compliment here bringing in uh, Pat Venditti after Bassett was rushing it up there in the mid 90s. We have to be patient here with Venditti. This fastball, especially from the left side, stays in the low to mid 80s and then that slider down in the 70s. So you know, be patient, stay back. Trust your hands. Well, Parra swung at that pitch, which was the seventh pitch. Might have been a ball, but it was breaking towards the corner, so he fouls it off to stay alive. Weak fly ball to right field. Reddick is there, and he's got it. So eight pitches, but Venditti wins the battle. So now with Adam Jones coming up, you see he's already switched the glove. He's going to switch over and pitch right handed. He is a rookie. He was drafted by the Yankees. And came over here as a free agent to Oakland. So a 30 year old rookie. And just in case you're wondering, he has to pitch to Adam Jones right handed unless there's some chance he gets injured. If he gets injured, then he can pitch left handed, but he can't switch it up within an at bat. He has to declare and then stick with it. He won't hit it. Ground ball right to Laurie at third who stumbles but then gets up and fires across. So two quick outs here in the ninth inning. And now he puts the glove on the other hand knowing that Chris Davis is coming up. Right, he's watching the ground out. And then, oh, love goes on the other hand. Here comes Davis. <laughs> Outside, 1 0. Shift is on, and they are playing him deep into pull. 
Davis putting up some monster numbers this year against left handed pitching up over 300. Fouls it off trying to time it. That's an eight solid innings three runs on five hits now Venditti. Here's Miguel back on the bench after a solid outing. Mendetti, 268 games in the minor leagues. And a good take on a check swing. He did check. I think Carapaza says so. Yeah, well, most of the lefties here uh, jumping on the pitches that seem to be starting out at their body. Paro was swinging at pitches that. Looked like they were heading right for his kneecaps. He gets him on that inner third. High fly ball, right center field. Did he get enough? Back it goes. It is gone. Back to back nights. Walk off wins for the O's. The magic is back at the yard. Is that Chris Davis? Two home runs in this ball game. Big shot. And last night.